Kyle Meredith with the weekly feed here at Bonnaroo 2013. Derek Fenton Smith. I clapped. You might want to start over again. No, I'll use I the just clap. like to clap. No, that's it. It's in there. You're, you're now part of the video. Can you at least introduce me again? Derek Vincent Smith, aka Pretty Lights. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah. This it's is nice good. to have a breeze. Oh, it's, it's perfect. At Bonnaroo. It's usually the dust bowl or the mud bowl, yet I feel like this year we've had a nice, uh, we've had a nice... Uh, breeze bowl. So, breeze bowl. Breeze bowl. I guess bowl. it's gonna have... Now, you, you're kind of in your element here, though. I mean, this is, this is, this is what you do, right? This is the, you play for the big crowds. You're... I feel like this is what it's all about. This is what it is for any artist, but especially... This, for me, is definitely one of the most exciting shows yeah. that I get to play. And, you know, Bonnaroo does the... You know, they don't do artists two years in a row very often. Mm -hmm. So, once every two years, you get to pop I get to <laughs> do a special set at Bonnaroo where I can yeah. unload all kinds of... Um, you know, new material sure, and, and, sure. and a new show and just and, and put a lot of effort into Bonnaroo. Yeah. I, I really, I really like the festival. It's great to hear and, it too because some people, some artists kind of, yeah, you know, they can make it just another gig. Walk in, here's our set and get out. Yeah. It's actually here, you know, because it is special. It's something different. It's not your usual tour. So that's kind of nice. You're talking about new music, and we're talking about a color map of the sun, which is this uh, this new record. That's the name of my new record. Yeah, yeah correct. Yeah, that's a new record, and you know, there's, and there's, people are like, "What? What did he say?" A, a color, color map, map of, of the, the sun. sun. Jinx. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, so this is cool. I mean, this is this is a great thing. You're, you're really putting some good promotion on this because this is something different for you. This is something special. Yeah. I mean, this is what's the hook we're talking about here? This is all live music and everything. Well, it's confusing for people, and I'm doing my best to make everyone understand. All right, let it make because, us understand. Because you know, I, you know, the reason I think that people are a little confused by it because there's these like parallels mm -hmm. between the new Daft Punk album, where mm -hmm. they, you know, the, in their, you know, they've talked about how they went back to live instruments, sure, sure, and that sure. was this big jump, right? So. With my record, you know, a lot of people ask me, so this is your first record without samples? And I'm like, well, kind of. Yeah. But really, I like to think of it as a completely sample-based record, but I just made all the records right. to sample. Right. You know, so I didn't just go back and, you know, I didn't just change my production method to work with live musicians. I, I really put a lot of research and, and effort into assembling the right groups of musicians, mm -hmm. into recording them mm -hmm. in the right way that that um, emulates the sound of the era mm -hmm. and the, the, the place where that style originated, sure. you know? So everything from like 1968 soul to, yeah. you know, class, like, 1800s classical to so like right, right. Uh, you know 1920s orchestral music to 40s French soundtrack. I mean, I was trying to make music from all these different times and places, yeah. and try to compose something that was something that I would flip over if I found it in the in the record store and want a sample. You know, See, so you used a few words there that's actually uh, part of the definition of this thing. You use a compose. You know, and you're talking about these instrumentalists and everything that you're assembling. So when you go to, did you sit? Did, are you looking at as the big conductor? Are you actually writing the music, or are you kind of saying this is the sound we're going for, and these musicians are kind of coming up and saying, does this work? work? I mean, how does the actual construction and songwriting happen with you on it? Well, like I appre I like that you asked that because you know I've done a few interviews and no one cares to get that deep. <laughs> Let's go deep. On Let's this. go deep. deep. Uh, so yeah, I mean. You know, actually, that since this is such a unique way of making a record, mm -hmm. um, I had to have a an agreement with the musicians beforehand, right? Yeah. And I worked with so many musicians that there was no way that I was going to like be like, you know, if some musician wrote a riff and I used it that. The, you know, everybody has like points and back end because the, the other issue is that I sell and give my music away for free, right? So I went into these sessions, you know, telling musicians that I didn't want them to write anything. Right. I want you to play what I give you. 
and play it how I ask you to play it and play it as best as you can and contribute in that way but I don't want you riffing or writing or, or doing you know stay away from that territory so that's what it was and it was and it was on the fly composition it was like I didn't go in with a bunch of sheet music right 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 and and uh, you know uh, a musical director assistant or anything I, I went in with like a notepad and a, and a Wurlitzer where I could figure out chord progressions, right. write them down, and then I would go to every musician in the room that I had assembled. You know, one day it would be drums, Hammond, Whirly, horns, bass, and guitar. Right. One day it would be upright, trombone, vibraphone, and drums. You know, one day it would be nickel, harpa, and um, you know, a uh, trumpet violin, like I mean, you've got to know weird a stuff. Lot. You've got to know a lot about music to kind of get into that type of thing. Like, so you you back all the way up, and you started as a producer. You started you basically as a hip hop producer, and you know, then you get into the pretty light sound and everything. And somewhere around there, you have to pick up your own musical chops to be able to pull something like this off. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, the thing is, the thing is, is I was composing music on the fly, right? But I was not comp composing symphonies. Mm -hmm. I was not composing entire songs. Mm -hmm. I was composing what hip hop producers hope they're gonna find when they go into a record store. Right, right. And that's one little section of a song it's that we that we like to call the break. Sure, sure. I was making records full of breaks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and, and and producers dig and they dig and they dig and they dig just to find that one break. And I made all these records where I got break, 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 and they're all fresh because I know what I wanted. So it, it wasn't super technical or sophisticated or really deep into musical theory. It was, you know, I know basic music theory. I can come up with chord progressions and the important, the most important part is hearing in your head the timbre of each instrument, mm -hmm. so the, the specific sound. Because I mean, you can get a an infinite amount of sounds out of a guitar. So if I have a guitarist in the room, I have got to know exactly what that guitar is going to sound like on this recording, you know? And so I would go to the guitarist and I'd be strum D minor. They strum it. Uh, no, add the ninth. D minor ninth. Okay, no, wait. Reverse the strum. Strum up. Okay, mm, palm mute it. Right. Wait, don't palm mute it so much. Okay, wait. Just do the three strings. All right, try to finger that on the higher register. And then we do that for 10 minutes, and then they'd have this chord played exactly how I wanted it. Yeah, yeah. And they never would have played it like that unless we worked through it. Sure, sure. And then with it, do that with every instrument and tell them which beat to hit their simple part on, and then it comes together. I mean, you've got to have a huge amount of patience. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure in the moment and, of creativity, it's and exciting and everything. It but is. To, get to that point, you know. It is. It's. And, and, and what I had to learn was how to communicate sure, sure. with each different player yeah, yeah, yeah. and type of player and different ages of players. Yeah. So that was that's what I learned the most, you know, over this process is is communication skills. Yeah. You really had to direct musicians to, to get what I want. Yeah. And and I worked with an, an engineer that was luckily. I mean, he was a, he was a a foundation in in the building that is this record you know a foundation block a corner piece sure. and that and that he was able to manifest these sounds i was describing i'd be like yo imagine you know a soundtrack record from you know this place with this composer from this year and in and, and the guitar and he'd be like oh yeah i know that right like i'd reference specific records and yeah. be like let's get that sound for this instrument yeah and um just the, We'd work on it till we got it. Yeah, the way records are made is. This is this must be so boring for no, like 99. It's, it's exactly people. what you know we want to get there because some people. I mean, you never get this chance. You never get this type of record. You know, no one makes this type of record. This is something different. It is. And I guess it goes back like you you, you kind of get lumped and you know I've read that you like those three words, those three letters rather E D. You know, it's all out there, right? I've changed it. Sure. H S F. I read that, which means. <laughs> <laughs> 
I wrote it on a tweet just real fast. Yeah. I was like, this ain't EDM, this is HSF, heart, soul, and flavor. Right. And and I was, you know, kids picked right. it up and all of a sudden I'm seeing it on like t-shirts and stuff great. like that. You can ask for better viral and stuff, but, but that, that is important because, it, you know, you've separated yourself now. Whether, whether it was ever there before, you know, I mean, people are going to generalize you because that's what journalists do. Generalize, yeah. right? Yeah. So you got to get that. It's actually kind of set that aside and push away from it. I mean, it's noticeable. And to get a record like a color map of the sun sounding like this, it's like, okay, this is something different. This is something, you know, cool. And for a genre, even even if you're in that section of the record store, for a genre that's uh, finding the success it's finding and the backlash at the same time, this is something that's kind of feels like it's progressing the entire movement. So, well, you know what? I'll give you a big hug if you want. I, <laughs> that's it right there. All right. That was very <laughs> kind of you, you know, and but it has to. Honestly, it has to. you have to have a movement that moves forward, and that's why it's called a movement. If it's going to be some, this is the stuff that has to happen. So that's it is the compliment. Yeah, and that's man, you you, you put it very articulately and, and and poetically and and beautifully. That's what I mean. That's what I that's what I want to do with every project. Yeah. You know, is is keep. This, this style that I've developed, but evolve it yeah. and push it and challenge myself and do something different, but not something so, not something different just to be different. Mm -hmm. Something different to be new sure. and to be, and to inspire, yeah. you know? It's like, I don't know, man, it, I, I really, it, it all connects with my philosophy of how I distribute my music. Mm -hmm like why I do it it's like you know people ask me why why do you put why do you put so much effort into this you know and I hate talking about money but this is, yeah. this is an independent record sure, and it's sure. expensive as hell and I you Give know I made this because I wanted to mm -hmm. because I felt that I it, I it needed to exist right I wanted this to exist and now anyone who wants it can have it yeah. And I made, you know, I made, I made sure to make a really awesome double vinyl LP and a really awesome double CD with a bonus disc because, you know, this is the first time I'm really asking people to support my music by uh, purchasing a record and 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 um, I was worried about that. Yeah, I mean, and that's if, weird, if people right? Come to expect something, you think it, but I think it's different when you have so many fans that do kind of put their trust in you. They're like, they're pretty light fans, you know. They're, they're going to say that, like, oh, you know, you have somebody with the list. I love pretty light. Well, those you, people, those people that do take the time even just to go hit the like button on Facebook, and those are something different. So you're going to have that. You're going to say, you know, here it is. Take it, take it. But if you want something, you know, real, real, you'd be afraid to ask. So there. Yeah. So. And and I, I, w I was nervous because I know that there's there's some people out there who are like, oh, it's a it's pretty lights music. I, I don't pay for pretty lights right, music. Right, 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 right. And you know, people warned me along the way. The second record, third record that I decided to give up, give up for free. They're like, aren't you worried you're devaluing your music? Not that's great music, right? Well, I'm like, no. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, the music is good. I'm proud of it. It's yeah. dope. I'm giving it away because I just want people to have it. I don't need to make more money. I'm paying my rent off the shows, okay? Right, right. I don't need a new vintage Jaguar. Yeah. You know? Yeah, That'd yeah. be cool, but... Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need that. You know what I mean? It's fine, yeah. This is like... I, you know, when I do have successes mm -hmm. uh, in, with the music industry and with the touring, you know, all... I just want to put it back into something sure. bigger and better, not bigger, just better, yeah. you know, and yeah, cooler yeah. and and more original and 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 really just see how far it can be pushed. Yeah. Well, it's fun watching a color map of the sun from Pretty Lights uh, officially. It's not out right now, right? No, it's not out right now. There's 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 two songs. Yeah. Off of it, out one that leaked and one that I put out as a single with the video, but. The record officially comes out July 2nd. Alright man, can't wait to hear the whole thing. Yeah. Thanks so much. I can't wait to hear what you think about it. Uh, I would love to.